<laughs> what an extraordinary question. Why do you want to know? I read a piece recently from the States. Some man was cross-examined for 23 hours. I wonder what your record was. Oh, I haven't the faintest idea. I do remember one 17-hour stint, though. A Dane, Carl Anderson. Yeah. I remember him, too. Wasn't that a murder case? It was, and a very strange one. A murder outside Paris at the Monocle. I'm not surprised that you remember him. Well, it wasn't only his appearance. It was his... His elegance and his dignity. He never lost it all through the 17 hours. And that's not easy. I question him all afternoon. I went on through the six o'clock rush home while the offices emptied and the metro filled. I was still questioning him at dawn when the office cleaners came in to start another day. But at last it was all over. Now you stand by everything you've told me. I do. You realize how improbable it sounds? Yes, but it's the truth. Mm. You hope to be set free in the absence of positive proof? Eh? I don't hope anything. Do you want me to read this to you before you sign it? As you please. Right. I'll summarize it for you. Uh, <clears throat> you're a Danish citizen. You arrived in France three years ago with your sister Elsa. You lived for a month in Paris... And then you rented a country house on the main road from Paris to Etampes, two miles from Aprajon, at a place known as the Three Widows' Crossroad. Yes, that's correct. For the past three years, you lived there in complete isolation. You bought a five-horsepower motor car of an obsolete make, which you used to do your shopping at the market at Aprajon. Once a month, you come to Paris. To deliver my work to the firm of Dumas and Son in the Rue des Quatre Septembre, I designed furnishing fabrics, as I told you. You're paid 500 francs for each design, and on average you produce four designs a month. On an average, yes. On Saturday night, you went to bed as usual at about 10 o'clock. And again, as usual, you locked your sister in her bedroom, which is next to yours. She is a very nervous girl, that is why. At seven o'clock on Sunday morning, Monsieur Emile Michonnet, an insurance agent who lives in a villa a hundred yards from your house, went into his garage and found that his car, a new six-cylinder, had disappeared. And its place had been taken by your old croc. Monsieur Michonnet went over to your house, found the gate locked and rang the bell. There was no reply. He told the police. They found the house empty. Monsieur Michonnet's car was in your garage. And in the front seat, slumped over the steering wheel, was a dead man. I knew nothing about it. He'd been shot at point-blank range. According to his papers, he was Isaac Goldberg, a diamond merchant from Antwerp. Now, you and your sister had taken the Paris train. You were picked up on your arrival at the Garde d'Orsay. I deny having killed anybody. Now, you also deny having known Isaac Goldberg. I saw him for the first time in my garage, dead, at the wheel of a car which doesn't belong to me. Mm, and instead of telephoning for the police, you and your sister ran for it. I was frightened. You have nothing to add? Nothing. And you heard nothing during Saturday night? I'm a very heavy sleeper. Mm, right. Sign here. Uh, thank you. Uh, one moment. Jean Vier, take Monsieur Anderson through to the office. He's free to leave. Right, sir. Uh, your things will be returned to you. You remain, of course, at the law's disposal. Any attempt to leave the country and I'll have you taken to the Santé prison. What about my sister? Well, you'll find her at home. Thank you, Chief Inspector. Oh, don't mention it. Yes. I give you my word of honour that I'm innocent. I'm not asking you for anything. Now, Monsieur Michonnet, what can I do for you? I've come about my car, Inspector. I had a long talk last night with Madame Michonnet, whose acquaintance I hope you'll make before long, and she agrees with me. 
Uh, I can't do without a car. Monsieur Michelet... It's essential for business. You see, my area stretches 20 miles from Arpajon. Now, Madame Michonnet agrees with me. We don't want to keep a car in which a man has been killed. It's up to the law to do the necessary. Uh, to provide us with a new car of the same type as the other one. Yeah, but... Except that I want this one to be maroon, which makes no difference to the price. Uh, you have to remember that my car had been run in, and I shall have to... Look, is that all you have to say to me? It is a matter of urgency that a well, car... Well, very well. I shall come and see you at your house. Uh, and what about the car? When the investigation's over, your car will be returned to you. But I told you that Madame Michonnet and, and please I... please give my regards to Madame Michonnet. Uh, Good morning, monsieur. jean get me a taxi in a couple of hours' time, and I'm joining new car down to the Three Widows Crossroads. Yes, Chief. It's not much of a room, I'm afraid, Chief, but it's the best I can manage. Oh, it'll do, new car. Anything to report? Not much. Garage proprietor gossips about a lot, though. Mayor Oscar hasn't got much time for the Michonnets. Thinks they're a stuck-up pan. What's Oscar himself like? Bit of a rough diamond. Except that he isn't a diamond. He doesn't seem to know much about the Andersons. He's only ever seen the sister twice. Village gossip says the house is like a pigsty inside. Junk all over the place. Lovely house, too. Uh, that's it. Over the wall on the far side of the square. Big country place. Gardeners, lodge, stables, a lot. But by the look of it, they only use two or three of the rooms in the main house. The rest looks derelict. Well, I'll go over and have a word with them. I take it Anderson's back. He got back about an hour before you arrived. Hmm. He walked up from the station. Quite a trek. Right. I'll see you later. Good evening, Chief Inspector. I had mentioned you'd be coming. I'd like to speak to your sister. Is she in? Yes. Come in. Thank you. Follow me. Please excuse our untidiness. Elsa, my dear. Uh. May I present Chief Inspector Maigret? No, <laughs> Please, uh, sit down, Inspector. Thank you. A cigarette, Carl. Of course. Hmm. You uh, wish to ask me questions? Yes. Your brother, mademoiselle, has told me that he heard nothing unusual during Saturday night. It seems he's a very heavy sleeper. Very. Uh, did you hear anything? Nothing particularly unusual, no. You know that we live on a main road. The traffic goes on through the night. Every day from uh, 8 o'clock in the evening, lorries go past on their way to the central market and make much noise. Our sleep is interrupted all the time. Uh, if the house were not so cheap... Had you ever heard of the dead man, Isaac Goldberg? Never. I'd like to look round the house, if I may. Certainly. I suppose you use this drawing room most of the time? Yes. It is here that I do my work. You haven't any servants? You know how much I earn. It isn't enough to allow me to pay a servant. Yeah, who does the cooking? I do. I suppose you want to see the garage, too. The police have put seals on it, but you must have authority to break them. You haven't offered the chief inspector a cup of tea, Carl. Oh, thank you, but I never drink tea. But I do, and I want some now. Uh, will you have some whiskey then, inspector? Uh, Carl, please. I'm sorry. What can I offer you? No, nothing, thank you. Ah, it's all incredible, isn't it? My brother insisted that we'd be accused because the dead man was found in our garage. He wanted to run away. I wanted to stay. I was sure that the police would understand that if we had really committed the murder, it would not be in our interest. It... There's someone at the French window. Yeah, uh, it's my inspector. Excuse me, may uh, I? Um... Of course. What is it, Luca? 
There's a telegram for you, sir. Madame Goldberg is arriving tonight by car. Ah. Now, um, excuse me, I'll come back again tomorrow. My respects, mademoiselle. Oh, you aren't going to look at the garage, then? Tomorrow. Good night. What's the time, Luca? Half past nine. What time was Madame Goldberg due here? Eight o'clock. Hmm. Shall I ring headquarters and check? No, I'll give them another five minutes. Evening, gentlemen. Good evening, Monsieur Oscar. Let me introduce Chief Inspector Maygrave. Oh, pleased to meet you. Evening. Lovely night. If this keeps up, we'll have splendid weather for Easter. Um, tell me, does your garage stay open all night? No, but there's always a man on duty. Um, he's got a bed through the back. The door's locked after about ten. People who know the place ring the bell if they need anything. Is there much traffic on the road at night? Well, not a lot. Lorries on their way to market, mainly. The drivers sometimes need petrol or minor repairs. Uh, will you come in and have a drink? No, thank oh, Pity. All right, I won't press you. Another time. I'd better get back. Uh, Zozo, uh, check the third pump, will you? It's broken down. Excuse me. Yeah? Is this the Three Widows Crossroads? Yes, it is. Thank you. It's the right place, madame. Thank you, Maurice. No, no, no. It's, it's all right, it's all right. Oh, I can manage. Oh! oh thank oh, God, she's been shot. Mm. Stop! You! Stop! He got away, damn him. You'd better get a doctor. Yes, but I don't think he'll be able to do much. Is it? Uh... Yes, Madame Goldberg. Mm. I heard a shot. Has someone been hurt? Yes. Did you see anyone? Well, just a motorist to ask the way to Almby. Oh, there's a light on in the missionary house, Luca. I'm going there. Right, Chief. Who's there? No, Chief Inspector Maigre. I'd like to speak to Monsieur Michonnet. He isn't here. He went out for a moment. How long ago? Oh, I don't know. Perhaps half an hour? Someone's in your kitchen. Ah, good evening, Monsieur Michonnet. Give me that gun. What? Your gun. What for? <laughs> yeah, it hasn't been fired. No, it hasn't. Well, where have you come from? I just came in the back door. I've been over there. What do you mean by over there? Don't be frightened, Emile. They wouldn't dare do anything to you. This really is too much. Do you realize that my brother-in-law is a justice of the peace in Carcassonne? Mm, just a moment, madame. What were you doing? I've been at the Anderson's house. I wanted to keep an eye on them myself. You didn't go to the field? You didn't hear anything? Well, there was a shot, wasn't there? Uh, has somebody been killed? We don't know yet. I swear to you, Chief Inspector. Oh, it's absolutely monstrous. It's my car that's stolen. It's in my car that somebody leaves a corpse. And they refuse to let me have it back when I've slaved away for 15 years to buy it. And uh, now I'm accused of heaven knows what. Be quiet, Emil. I'll speak to him. There are no other weapons in the house? No, just this revolver. I bought it when we had the villa built. It, it's never been used. Mm. You've been at the Anderson's house. You saw them? Yes, through the window. They're both in the sitting room. Why were you there? I was afraid my car might be stolen again. I wanted to carry out my own investigations. Had you left there when you heard the shot? Yes, but I wasn't sure that it was a shot. You saw nobody else? Nobody. Um, excuse me, Chief Inspector. Yes, Monsieur Oscar, what is it? Uh, forgive me for walking through, madame. The door was open. Uh, your colleague sent me, Inspector, to tell you that the woman is dead. They took the body down to the morgue in Arpajan late last night, Chief. Then this morning I went over that field again. Nothing new. The footprints go in a circle, starting off and finishing up about halfway down the road from the Andersons to the garage. What were the shoes like? Oh, pretty ordinary. Smooth sole, average size. Uh, they would be. Oh, and Anderson's downstairs at reception. Wants to know if he can drive into Paris. Or straight away? Yes. Yeah. He says he has to collect his pay from that firm he designs for. On his own? Yes. Hmm. 
All right. While he's away, I think I'll pay another call on that sister of his. The chief inspector, who was here yesterday. I'd like to have a word with you, mademoiselle. I'm listening. Well, perhaps you'd be good enough to open the door. You are asking me to do something very difficult, uh, chief inspector. Well, why? Because I am uh, locked in. Well, who's locked you in? My brother, Carl. I ask him to uh, when he goes out. I'm afraid of prowlers. Uh, well, if I can open the door, would you allow me in, mademoiselle? Of course. Hmm. Uh. Ah. Hmm. Ah. How resourceful you are. Chief Inspector. Well, I wanted to talk to you. Oh, uh, forgive me if I'm disturbing you. <laughs> no, you're not disturbing me. Um, but do forgive my negligee. Uh, well, it's, uh, it's charming. <laughs> uh, why didn't you go to Paris with your brother? He says... Uh, it's embarrassing to have women around uh, when men are talking business. Do you ever leave this house? Oh, yes. Uh, to go for walks in the park. Just for that? Oh, it's eight acres. That's enough for stretching my legs, isn't it? Oh, but uh, do sit down, Chief Inspector. Mm. Here. Oh. <clears throat> <sighs> ah. It's... Uh, Funny seeing you here on the sly. Uh, what do you mean? I mean that my brother will be furious uh, when he gets back. He's worse than a mother or a jealous lover. He looks after me and he takes his uh, responsibilities very seriously. Uh, I thought it was you who wanted to be locked up for fear of burglars. That comes into it, too. I've become so used to being on my own that I've ended up uh, frightened of people. Are you bored here? No. <laughs> yes. Oh, I, I don't know. Sometimes uh, I wish I were a child again. You spent your childhood in Denmark? Yes. In a big castle on the shores of the Baltic. A terrible, gloomy castle, all white in a grey-green uh, landscape. We were rich, but our parents were very strict, like most Protestants. For my part, I have no use for religion, but Carl is still a believer. We left the country... Three to... years ago. Yes. Just think of it. My brother, destined to become an important court official. As a boy, he had the same tutor as the crown prince. <laughs> now he prefers to bury himself here. And bury you at the same time. Yes. Your brother's a strange man. Oh, what do you expect me to say? He acts strangely sometimes. But that business of the car... Why should he have killed a man he doesn't know? 
You sure you've never seen Isaac Goldberg before? Quite sure. There must have been a mistake. It's because of that you let him go, isn't it? Perhaps. You will defend him, won't you? You you will get him out of this mess. I should be so grateful to you. <clears throat> Um, and and now you you'd better go. If he finds you here, heaven knows what he'll think. Now, Lapointe, Anderson's employers confirmed there's some cash for him to pick up, but up till a quarter of an hour ago, he hadn't shown up. Hmm. I circulate the description of his car to all police stations and frontier posts. We'll let you know if he arrives back here. Any other news, Lucar? The doctor's taken the bullet out of Madame Goldberg, as we thought it's a rifle bullet. Mm, nothing else? Uh, yes. I checked with the Belgian police, and they say they'd suspected Goldberg for a long time of trafficking in stolen jewels. Ah. His visit down here came just after a theft of two million pounds worth of jewels in London. They think he brought them here to dispose of them. Do they? Mm. Well, if so, where are they? Nothing was found on the body. Where is my brother, Inspector? Why hasn't he come home? We have news of your brother, Mademoiselle. That's why I called. Y yes? His car has been found abandoned just this side of the Belgian frontier. What? Everything suggests he fled the country. Oh, no, that, that isn't true. It, it's impossible. He, he wouldn't have left me here alone. What would become of me with nobody to look after me? Mademoiselle... I hate this place. I want to get away. Away from this house, away from the crossroads. I want to go to Paris where there are people. The country frightens me. Will they arrest Carl in Belgium? A warrant will be issued for his extradition. Oh, it's incredible. When I think that only three days ago... A great all... deal can happen in three days, mademoiselle. Come in. Yes, Lucar, what is it? Nothing much, Chief. I just saw the garage proprietor in his Sunday best and asked him where he was going. It seems he's in the habit of taking his wife out to dinner in Paris once a week and afterwards going to the theatre. When that happens, he doesn't come back till the next day because he spends the night in a hotel. I just thought you ought to know where they all are. Mm, has he left? Must have done by now. Did you ask him where he has dinner? At the Escargot in the Rue de la Bastille. <laughs> then he goes to the Ambigu Theatre. He puts up at the Hotel Rambuteau in the Rue de Rivoli. Ah, all cut and dried. <laughs> and uh, Michonet sent a message by his wife that he'd like to talk to. Or rather have a chat with you, to use his own word. Right. It's still a girl that puzzles me. Sometimes I think that all the people round her, the garage proprietor, Michonet, the Dane, are all guilty, but not her. And sometimes I feel the exact opposite. <laughs> But then what about Anderson? A man like him. Well-bred, educated, intelligent, at the head of a gang. We'll see him tonight. What? But if he's crossed the frontier... Mm. You think that I his... think the whole business is ten times more complicated than you imagine. Well, look at the facts. Michonet was the first to lodge a complaint, and he's asked me over to his house tonight. The very night when the garage proprietor is in Paris, very ostentatiously. And Anderson has skipped over the frontier. I wonder what Michonet wants. What I want to know is, when am I going to get another car? Are you ill, monsieur? Your wife indicated you couldn't come downstairs. I have an attack of gout. Who wouldn't be ill in my position? You think it's smart, I suppose, to, to take the bread and butter out of a man's mouth. I, I'm not going to mince my words. It doesn't matter about the murderer. It's much more important worrying ordinary, decent folk. Anything else apart from your car? I would have thought that was plenty. I'm in pain. I'm looking forward to three or four nights in this armchair without any sleep. And I can't carry out my business without a car. I warn you, Chief Inspector... I shall call you as a witness when I bring an action for damages. Oh, thank you for the warning. Is that all you have to say to me? That is all. Mm. Good night, Inspector. 
Well, Yuka, did you check what calls there'd been from Paris? Two calls to the garage, one at one o'clock, one at five, one to the Michonais at five past five. All right. Now get half a dozen inspectors over here and post them round the crossroads. Very good, Jim. And then get someone at headquarters to check that Oscar is still in Paris. They can phone the restaurant, the theatre, the hotel and let us know if he leaves. Or, uh, better still, follow him. Where will you be? At the Andersons. Will you think that Anderson... I don't think anything at all. I've been thinking, thinking... About what? About Carl. He's been so strange these last years. Are you telling me you think he's guilty? N no. And even if he were, it would only mean he was mad. Mad? Oh, how can I explain? When we left Denmark, we were ruined. But my brother was convinced that with his background... He would find some splendid post in Paris. He didn't succeed. It was then it started. The fits of depression. His hatred of strangers. Then he decided to bury us here. And he insisted on locking me in my room every night on the pretext that we might be attacked. I was terrified. If there had been a fire, what could I have done? I should have been trapped. One day, when he was in Paris, I sent for a locksmith who made me a key. Did you? How did you manage that? I uh, had to climb out of the window, but I was desperate. Carl often spoke of destroying us both. I realized then he was seriously ill. I bought this revolver at Arpajon during another of my brother's trips to Paris. I keep it here, just in case. Hmm. Is that all? Don't you believe me? <coughs> oh, oh, I felt something would happen. What's going on? It's Carl Anderson, Chief. He's been shot. Oh. Elsa? Elsa? The doctor says he'll pull through unless there are any unforeseen complications. Mm. He's been shot twice. Once earlier on today, probably early afternoon, in the back of Point Blank Range, Browning Automatic. Someone was probably holding a gun in his back and he must have moved subtly and saved himself. The bullet was deflected and lodged between his ribs. And the other bullet? Fired from a rifle. It smashed his shoulder blade. The doctor's sending an ambulance over straight away. Elsa? He's conscious. Mm. No, don't move, Anderson. Elsa's in her room. I'll send her in in a minute. Did you see who shot at you? No. And the first time, where was that? I was on my way to deliver my work. You didn't show up there? No. At the Porte d'Orléans, a man flecked me down. He said he was the police. Yeah, let me have you. <sighs> he got into the car and told me to take the road to Compiègne. The road goes through a forest, and as I was taking a bend, I was shot in the back. Yes? I came to in the ditch. The car had gone. What time was that? I don't know. Late morning, I think. I kept feeling faint. I could hear trains going by. I found a station. By five o'clock, I was in Paris. Finally, I came here. Did you meet anybody? No. I came through the park. Just as I got near the steps, somebody fired a shot. Oh, please, I'd like to see Elsa. Mm, I'll send her in. Luca. Yes, Jean. Make sure the garage proprietor hasn't left Paris. Right. What next? Hmm? I haven't the faintest idea. Where did you end up, Jules? Well, there weren't many places to choose from. 
I could see Michelet silhouetted against his window, still sitting in his armchair, so I popped my head into the garage. Had Oscar got back? No, but uh, one of his mechanics was there, loading a spare wheel onto the back of a lorry. Odd. I don't see anything odd in that. It was a garage, after all. Well, the wheel was the wrong size for the lorry. Hmm. Well, he could have been picking it up for another car. No, he wasn't. And there were dozens of spare wheels there. Far too many for a place that size. The mechanic seemed rather anxious to leave, so I handcuffed him to one of the workbenches and opened up the tyres. And what did you find? The diamonds? No. Drugs, mainly. Cocaine, heroin. But there were other things. Silverware, jewellery, money. <laughs> you name it, they'd got it. So all the lorry drivers had to do was pull up at the garage, change their spare wheel for one containing the loot, and drive on their way. Mm. And nobody any the wiser. Except you. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that nearly turned out nastily. How? Well, I heard a car slowing down outside. Someone shouted, Oscar. I went out, and as I did, whoever was in the car opened fire with a revolver. Well, I dived back inside, and they drove off. The police on guard at the Andersons heard the row and set off after them. Who was it? Oh, Oscar and some Italian he'd brought back from Paris. Name of Ferrari, Guido Ferrari. Our chaps caught up with them about 20 miles along the road. Lively little place, your three widows' crossroads. <laughs> Noisy, too. Guns going off all over the place. When I looked up at Michelet's window, there he was, still sitting in his armchair, hadn't moved. Well, he had gout, hadn't he? Yeah, but even with gout, you'd expect him to turn round, pull the curtains back, have a peep. So Luca and I went across and took a look round. No sign of Michelet. Just one of his wife's mops, propped up in the chair and arranged to throw a shadow like a head on the curtain. So that anyone would think Michonet was still at home. Or oh, so that I'd think he was still at home. And then the crossroads really started to get noisy. We were just leaving the house when we heard what sounded like a, a fight going on in the Anderson's garden. Devil of a row. We got there, and who do you think it was? Michonet and Elsa Anderson. <laughs> How do you know? Everyone else was busy shooting or being shot at. She's got the gun, Chief. She's fired off five shots already. We can't get near them. Michonet. Mademoiselle Anderson, give yourselves up. Michonet, let her go. That's the last, is it? I think so. Oh, I hope you're right. Oh, come on, let her go, Michonet. Elsa, the gun's empty. Drop it. Oh, that's better. Oh, oh. Now, what the hell are you two up to? He was th throttling me. That's a lie. Uh, he tried to strangle me. He's, he's insane. She's uh, lying. She's the one who's insane. Why had you got that revolver? I, I, I was afraid of a trap. It's a lie. You say you were attacked. Yes. She's lying. And you didn't scream for help? I couldn't. What stopped you? He, he did. She's lying. He's mad. Now take him inside, Luca. <laughs> right, sir. Now, oh. come on, mademoiselle. It's all over. Oh, I suppose it is. What gave you the tip-off? Did I make a mistake? Several. How long have you been Carl Anderson's mistress? <laughs> I'm not his mistress. I'm his wife. Mm. Where did you meet Isaac Goldberg? I'm not talking. Oh, well, most of the facts seem to have fallen into place already, so as for the rest, we'll see. All right, Luca, let's have a look at them. In you come. Those are Oscar Michonet. Who was this? Guido Ferrari. He was in the car with Oscar when they were picked up. Is he known? Yes. Right. Now... First crime. Isaac Goldberg is shot at point-blank range. Who brought Goldberg to the Three Widows' Crossroads? I have nothing at all to do Be with this, Inspector. Be quiet, Ferrari. We'll deal with you in a moment. Well, I'm waiting. Goldberg was in Antwerp, 
There was something like two million worth of diamonds to get rid of. Who started the ball rolling? I did. I met him in Copenhagen. I knew he specialised in stolen jewels. When I read about the London robbery and the papers said the diamonds were supposed to be in Antwerp, I, I guessed Goldberg was in on it. I spoke to Oscar about it. Who wrote to Goldberg? She did. And what was your part in all this, Oscar? I was the fence. I found markets for the stuff, that's all. So, Goldberg arrived during the night in his own car. There was a party waiting for him, because you weren't planning to buy the diamonds, however cheap they were, but to steal them. And to steal them from Goldberg, you had to kill him. Now, who was given the job? Anderson. Who? Anderson. <laughs> that's a lie. Elsa, how did you meet Anderson? It was in Copenhagen. I was living with a sailor, um, Hans. He belonged to a gang, and one night they decided to break into a bank, but somebody squealed and the cops surrounded us. I started to run, and then I saw the wall of a park. I pulled myself up and fell down the other side. And when I came to, there was this tall young man looking down at me. Anderson? Yes. He hid me in his parents' house and looked after me. He lost his eye in a flying accident. He wore a black monocle. He was convinced that no woman could ever love him uh, looking like that. But he fell in love with you? Yes. We got married in Holland. He taught me to uh, dress differently, how to lose my accent. Uh, he made me read books and Later we settled here because uh, Carl was always afraid of meeting some of my uh, old friends. To throw people off the scent, he passed me off as his sister. How did you get mixed up with Oscar? I spotted her, damn it. It was easy. I saw straight away that all her airs and graces were put on. I used to pray around the house when old one eye wasn't there. One day we got into conversation through the window. She caught on straight away. I threw her a lump of wax to make an impression of a lock. Then we met outside and we talked. It was easy. She was fed up, anchored after the old life. Hmm. Now, every night there was a lot of suspicious activity at the crossroads. The vegetable lorries coming back empty from Paris, bringing the stolen good. There was no need to worry about the Andersons' house, but there uh, remained the Michonnais. We needed a respectable character to sell some of the stuff in the country. Mm. Elsa, I suppose, was given the job of fixing Michonnet. <laughs> well, what's the good of a cracker like that otherwise? He fell for us straight away, didn't you, Michonnet? So, you got the chance of a couple of millions worth of diamonds, but you're going to end up with a corpse as well. It was then you decided to frame Anderson, wasn't it? It was her idea. You? Yes, I know. Elsa had got to the point where she hated him. So he was to be saddled with the crime. That's right, isn't it, Elsa? I'm not talking. Michonnet is very scared. He's never been mixed up in anything like this before. So it's decided to take his car, as that's the best way to clear him. He'll be the first to complain to the police and make a fuss about its disappearance. And somebody has the bright idea of switching cars so that the police would be led to Anderson's garage. But things started to go wrong. I didn't arrest Anderson. I let him go free. And to cap it all, Madame Goldberg turned up. Are you going to tell me who killed her? Never mind. I know the same man killed both the Goldbergs when it was he who posed as a police officer and shot Anderson. But Carl wasn't dead. The murderer, after he'd abandoned his car, went back to the ditch for the body and it was gone. He telephoned Oscar from Paris. Carl is bound to come back to his wife. He must be finished off. So, now the moment has come to use poor, besotted Michonnet. You, you have no proof. I wouldn't rely on that. Oscar goes to Paris, very ostentatiously. Elsa tells Michonnet she'll go away with him once Carl is dead. So he shoots Carl. But once more, Carl survives. He would. Yes. Meanwhile, Oscar hears all isn't going to plan. He and Ferrari drive down from Paris and attempt to kill me. 
They take the road to Orléans. Why? You know so much, you tell us. Oh, thank you, I will. They go that way because a lorry is on that road with a spare wheel containing the diamonds. Why did you attack Elsa, Michonet? I didn't. I loved her, but she tried to kill me. Yes, that fits. She knew your talk. You weren't a professional. So she decided to finish you off. And you, Oscar? I'm a fence. Just that. I've never had anything to do with killing. He's a lying. He's not Ferrari. Because you're the one that fired the gun three times. First at Goldberg, then at his wife, and finally in the car at Carl. That's a lie. He gave all the orders. Him, Oscar. Get them Lord, out you. of here, Luca. Thief, I didn't even get the money you promised me. Take them me. back to headquarters. Come along, you. You bloody walk. Come on. Oscar, Oscar, <sighs> well, Elsa. Well, what? It's Carl's fault, too. Really? You know yourself it's his fault. He's half mad. It excited him to know I belong to a gang. That's why he fell in love with me. And if I'd become the virtuous young woman he wanted to make me, he'd soon have got bored. All the same... And Ferrari was the killer, wasn't he? <laughs> oh, no. You won't get me to squeal, Chief Inspector. Au revoir. No au revoir, mademoiselle. <laughs> Madame. How long did she get? Three years. And Carl? Oh, he recovered. His family took him back. I saw him again just once, three months later, at the prison, waving his marriage contract and demanding to see Elsa. He stood by her in spite of everything. Yes. 